Welcome back in. We want to continue our coverage of the Supreme Court taking up a challenge to an abortion pill. I want to talk about it medically with our nine health experts to talk about what mifepristone is, what it does, and, and you know how people have used it, how it's become, I guess, mainstream in many ways. Yeah, I mean, it's a medication that's been FDA approved for 24 years, so we have a ton of safety data on it, and gynecologists, internists, all types of doctors have been using it to medically terminate pregnancies. Now, some of these are terminations by choice, but some of these are miscarriages. A large proportion portion are miscarriages. It's very safe and it's very effective. In fact, 95 to 97 percent of women can have a successful termination on their own terms in their own home. And it's a two drug regimen, usually mifepristone followed by misoprostol, which helps to expel the contents of the uterus. So the first medicine, mifepristone, stops the pregnancy and the second one kind of empties the uterus. It induces contractions, and then you can just pass the pregnancy at home. You, you mentioned safety and efficacy, though. Wasn't that part of the challenge today? Why it was in front of the court? Was it, they were trying to question those. No, and that's what's really interesting. So they're not questioning the safety and the efficacy. The doctors, and I'm ashamed to say that they're doctors that brought this lawsuit, but the doctors mm. that brought it are saying, well, we don't want to have to manage the women who have complications from these medications. So everybody should stop. If they it. happen or had they happened. If, were, were, if they they happen. Nothing has happened yet to the doctors that brought this. In fact, many of the doctors that brought it had never even prescribed or come into contact with women who had used these medications. But theoretically, they were saying that the 0.31% of major complications, wow. extremely low percentage of complications that happen, they didn't want to have to manage. And so they're sort of saying across the board, we should stop using it. And the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology is really, really shocked at saying, well, you know, you're going to deny access to a lot of people. Now, what these doctors are saying is that you should use it before seven weeks of pregnancy. So that means that only gives you about three weeks after you might find out you're pregnant, because usually you need a missed period at a month to know. Previously, it was 10 weeks. And they're also saying you shouldn't allow telehealth providers to prescribe these medicines. Now, that severely limits access to women who don't have insurance or people who live far away. And so we think this will was, this will impact women of color or lower socioeconomic mm -hmm. status. And we know there's such widespread use of this drug. Every two and three abortions in this country use this drug. So, I mean, the implications, the widespread effect of not being able to get access to this, talk about that across healthcare the type of problems it's going to cause. I mean, a huge cascade of problems, and not just in the, those particular states, but really across the United States. This mm -hmm. would be a federal problem. And really what it would set up is people going to try other ways to terminate their pregnancies, which could be, you know, surgical abortions that are not safe. It could also be other drug regimens that can terminate pregnancies that are higher risk of complications, mm -hmm. because people are still going to need to terminate their pregnancies. And it's going to mean women who might miscarry, who are doomed to miscarry, would have to miscarry instead instead of being able to control how they can end their pregnancy. This also challenges the FDA approval. This challenges the FDA. This is huge. And it's for the first time they're saying the FDA was wrong after 24 years of approval and efficacy data. And I think it sets a dangerous precedent, not just legally, but medically as well, for us to start to question the FDA. Now, where does that end, right? The next thing they'll say is, is the FDA is not qualified to look at new drugs and tell us whether they're safe or not. What if they start questioning other prior approvals? So I think this is a slippery slope when it comes to questioning the credibility of the FDA, which has really kind of put their nickel down on this drug, saying that it's safe and effective. Yeah, and I think the outcome and where this leads, when you think about this, is the exact same group of justices who decided to outlaw abortion, you know, federally. So what happens now? So what happens? And, and, and also you're asking them to make, it seems like, the Supreme Court to try and make a medical, medical. interpretation, which is obviously not in their not their field of not expertise at all, yeah. Exactly. So. And, and each individual physician should have the liberty to say, you're a woman who's a good candidate, even if you're at 10 right. weeks or you're, you know, and taking that away from us doctors, it's incredibly frustrating, but I think, I worry that it's incredibly unsafe for our mm -hmm. patients. Dangerous. Well, it certainly will be talked about more and when we do get a, a ruling from the court, we'll follow up as well. It's good to see you, thanks. Dr. Paul Coley. We want you to know you can find so much more with Dr. Coley at 9news.com slash Dr. Coley.